you know, just to, you know, kind of share ideas. And, and so whether that was with, you know, the twins or, you know, Rick Spielman invited me, uh, to this leadership summit that they had. And, and, you know, we've been able to stay in touch since. And, you know, when I have issues, you know, that, that, that come up, you know, um, as a general manager, I feel really confident and comfortable that I can, I can reach out, uh, to any of those organizations and, you know, and we do that for each other. That, that I really like this community, this sports community, uh, and, and the leadership, uh, of each of the teams that we have in, in town. Uh, it's really special. It's, it's a great opportunity, you know, for me to, you know, kind of like cross the different sports and, you know, we all sort of value the same things. I think the analytics, we get there differently in terms of, you know, the numbers, obviously the sports are different. Uh, but I think we all value the same things and that we all want good people involved in this thing. We know that's the path. And, and, uh, I think that's why, you know, it's so easy, you know, across all the teams for all of us to root for each other. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled that we have that now in, in, the, in the Timberwolves organization, um, you know, the exchange of ideas, it's just really powerful. And, and, you know, we all, you know, we're all, you know, kind of have strong ideas of what it takes to be successful in our respective sports. Uh, you know, but I like the exchange of ideas of, of how we get there and, and, uh, everyone's been, you know, kind of open and, you know, I've enjoyed that. So it's not necessarily frequent communication. It's more of, you know, there's, there's an opportunity here or there, you know, that we get together, you know, to network a little bit and then, you know, like I said, you know, reaching out, you know, PJ Fleck, you know, when, when, you know, um, when he got to town, as everyone knows, he was, you know, he, he, he kind of, you know, he puts himself out there and, and, you know, everybody got an oar, I think <laughs> that, that lives in, in the twin cities, um, that, uh, you know, when they're doing well, you know, I've got, you know, the ability to just, you know, reach out and, and, and he does the same thing, you know, for our team. And, you know, and obviously, uh, you know, we, we've got, uh, the great Lindsay Whalen over there with the women's team. So just a really, really great time, I think. Uh, for all of our sports teams here uh, to, you know, just, just be really good to each other, root for each other. And, and uh, I think great things can happen. It's interesting because the twins people are very easy to like uh, your organization is very easy to like, you know, Gerson and, and uh, Ryan and the, you know, the key people on the business side for the Timberwolves are easy to like uh, Whalen's of course, easy to like Boudreaux's easy to like. I mean, there are a lot of people who just, you know, anybody would like in any circumstances. The interesting people for me, and it's interesting to hear your perspective on them as someone who, you know, has very high standards, is Spielman, like, is not really very good with local media. He doesn't talk much when he does. He's kind of controlling. Uh, but everything I hear about him as a human being in other settings is very good. You know, he's obviously adopted a bunch of kids. He's got a bunch of dogs. Uh, he's, yep. you know, he... <laughs> And I, when I talk to somebody like you, I get a completely different perspective on him than I get when I'm around that team. Uh, and PJ, you know, because he's doing the uh, promotional thing so avidly, you know, he can make you roll your eyes sometimes. But it sounds like your perspective <laughs> on both of them is that they're pretty good people. Yeah. You know, I think that's the core of it for me. Um, you know, uh, I, I kind of get it on the, um, on, on the media side, um, you know, with the NFL and you know, there's, I don't know, you know, I, I felt a little bit, you know, as, through the years as we've gotten a, a little bit more coverage that, um, you know, you can't have everything out there, you know, <laughs> your opponents read everything. There's somebody, there's, there's, there's a whole department that's assigned to, you know, kind of reading about, you know, and, and digesting all that's going on in a market. And, and, uh, you know, I, I think being guarded is probably, you know, the path in terms of, you know, you can't, you can't know everything. Um, you know, and I think that from a personality standpoint, you know, I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen Rick with the, with the media, but I just know, um, you know, he, he's warm, he's personable. Uh, he's, he's willing to share. Oh, I mean, that, you know, I, he took me through a tour, you know, like, like he took many people through tours of the facility and just, you know, just very open and proud and, and, uh, you know, willing to show anything, any questions I had or anything else I want, you know, he just was really, really gracious. And, and that's how I found him to be when I picked up the phone and needed some advice and, you know, just how, how giving he was, you know, he, he was able to share a lot of information and, um, and I guess maybe the media types are just a little bit different. Maybe that's a little bit harder for him. <laughs> well, know, and, and the NFL probably is, gotten burned at some point, I would imagine. Well, and the NFL is, I mean, it's the biggest, richest sports organization in North America ever. And 
you know, it's also a very violent sport. It's a sport where teams often, you know, it's a sport where that has a terrible history of asking players to play hurt, of not diagnosing players correctly, of not taking care of players. It's a, it's a brutal sport. It's a brutal business. And so there's a different tenor around football than there is around a lot of other sports. And there is also the built-in secrecy. I mean, that it's a sport that has game plans and hidden ideas that they can't let anybody else see. So I think it's just a completely different atmosphere. Now, there are some general managers like the guy in Indianapolis who are just, you know, walking around talking to people all the time and they, they still do a very good job. But I do think the NFL encourages, you know, silence and caution more than any other sport. Yeah, I would agree with that. And like baseball, uh, you know, listen, there are a million, you know, Thad and, and Derek have a million secrets and a million different things behind the scenes they don't want to talk about, but they're just happy to walk around and talk about their players all the time because guess what? They're not hiding a game plan. They're going to put a pitcher on the mound and try to throw strikes, you know? Right. All right, let's uh, hit on two more topics. Do want to thank Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com. Promo code is talk north. Use that for your first delivery fee wave. Then check out BiteSquad.com for the deal that best suits you and your area, including their members only deal five ninety nine a month for unlimited delivery within a four mile radius. Uh, so collective bargaining agreement has been extended for 60 days. What does that mean? I, I think, um, you know, the idea is that uh, both sides have, have worked really, really hard. I know there's a lot of ideas being exchanged and uh, I think basically they just ran out of time in terms of this deadline for the, the former CBA and uh, they just need more time. And so this extension, I think, is, is you know, is going to allow them the time to work through the details of, of the things that they've worked so hard on over the last year or so. And last topic, I do want to thank our longtime producer, Brandon Morton. Uh, Rebecca Brunson doing uh, game commentary for Fox Sports North at the Timberwolves games. Uh, what's that like for you to see one of your former players in that role? Well, you know, obviously I didn't get to see her last night, but right. overall, um, I know when, when she first embarked on, on that, um, you know, I, I just know I've been around Brunson, so I know, you know, what she's like, and I know the extent of her knowledge, you know, about the game and her ability to communicate that knowledge. And so to actually, when I saw uh, that they were, you know, going to go down that path, I thought, you know, that just would be tremendous. And and she's been as good as I, I thought she would be, and I think she's enjoying it. And, and uh, she just has a really unique ability, I think, to, to see what's happening, but then to put the, the right words on it. And uh, that's a gift, and, and I'm glad that she's able to use that gift, uh, you know, to benefit the FSN and the Wolves. Thanks to Cheryl. Uh, we'll have a little more basketball, a little more women's basketball to talk about as things move forward, as the offseason becomes more interesting, and we talk, start talking about go for, uh, go for women's hoops as well. Thanks to Brandon. Thanks to Cheryl. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>